morning, good afternoon, and good evening, YouTube. This is another edition of a Goth and a Jock with a slightly different twist. Um, if you look to my left and to my right, you'll see there's no one else. Um, the Jock of the group, David, he's decided he's going on holiday for four weeks, so uh, yeah, this place is all mine, my channel, mine. <laughs> right, um, now I've got that out of my system. Okay, um, also as well, just to uh, point out that uh, usually if you've been watching our channel, there's posters and lots of other bits and bobs all over the place. As you can see, there are none at the moment. Uh, that's because the studio we usually use is kind of out of action for a week. So, uh, yeah, happened on my watch. I love it. Okay, so then, now the rant's all over and done with. Um, just finished watching uh, episode six. See, uh, sorry, tell a lie. Uh, season six, episode five of uh, Game of Thrones, called The Door. And, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much all I can say about it, really. Um, we'll just crack straight on with it. So we start off... Oh, actually, before we do start off, uh, spoiler alert. Right, so then, uh, we start off with uh, Sansa being very prim and proper, making a little something, we don't know what at the moment. Uh, all of a sudden she gets a lovely little letter come through the, through the post uh, with the little finger stamp on it. Uh, with a meeting place to go uh, meet the, the little, little slimy little bastard, but uh, hey-ho. So she takes Brienne of Tarth with her, as a little natter with a little finger, to um, displays her dissatisfaction at little finger, kind of uh, leaving her in the um, shit. And so, uh, yeah, she's basically told him to uh, back off, uh, to put it bluntly. <laughs> um, little finger is obviously destroyed, he's uh, thinking, ah, shit, now how am I supposed to use the sensor to get through the, uh, get to the north if, uh, if she won't, uh, you know, let me around her, so, uh, Oops. She does. Uh, he does give uh, her a little bit of uh, advice about her uncle, Uncle Brendan. Um, he's taken over the uh, uh, River Run, and um, basically he's in open revolt against the uh, the Boltons. Basically, not exactly a powerful army from what we really understand. We haven't really seen it, so we don't really know. But there we go. There. Then we move on then to uh, Arya, who um, doesn't seem to be as kick-ass as she uh, normally uh, is, or has been for the past uh, few episodes. Uh, she seems to be going down a little bit of skill, if you ask me. Uh, you know, not so um, you know able to stand uh, toe to toe with her um, uh, with her arch rival, but you know. Um, well, we'll just have to see how, how it goes from there. Uh, it's just a little point. It seems more that the girl is constantly pushing her. Uh, you don't want to be here. You're not. You're not uh, no one. You're Arya Stark. You know. You have no right being here. Blah 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 blah. And even a mentor pretty much says the same thing. You know. Are you sure you want to be here? Can you serve the faceless god? And blah 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 blah. Um, so uh, she has proven herself uh, over the past few episodes. So now she gets herself another assignment uh, to assassinate some actor. Okay, fair enough. So she goes off in disguise, goes to the theatre, watches the show, and uh, yeah, it's kind of caught me off guard. To be fair, it's a show about the first few episodes of, uh, oh, actually the first season of Game of Thrones, really about uh, Robert Baratheon, how he gets killed by the boar, uh, Cersei, uh, <laughs> Joffrey. Yeah, I still resent the little bastard, but there we go. And obviously Ned Stark, and obviously they're portrayed not as the people they were, but uh, Ned's you know pretty much a northern idiot. Uh, Robert Baratheon is just a uh, drunk with his guts hanging out, and blah 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 blah. Um, they, yeah, they put Tyrion in a really bad light. I don't like that. But anyway. Um, Arya then starts having difficulty seeing us because obviously she was there, she witnessed it, she saw it all, and it's it's like um, she started becoming Arya again. Obviously, the pain of Arya coming out there. Um, but to be fair, she doesn't uh, give up her position. She doesn't try to you know kick off anything. She's there to uh, recon her target. Obviously, you know, find out who her target is, uh, how to get to her, what her likes, dislikes, so on and so forth. So she then obviously she rebe uh, reports back to her mentor. She tells her, her mentor that uh, yeah, I'm going to poison her rum because she's the only one who drinks it. But then she asks, um, you know, uh, who hired this? Uh, who hired us to, to kill this person? Is this person a decent person or not? And obviously her mentor turns around and says, um, uh, does uh, does the faceless god only take uh, you know uh, kill bad people and uh, leave the decent people behind? So, yeah, Arya might actually start the, to see the assassins for what they really are. Uh, we then uh, skip off to uh, Bran, to the north. Yeah, it's kind of a bit of a jump in distance, but there we are. And, um, yeah, Bran's uh, there in the tree doing his uh, uh, Branny thing. And he comes uh, across on the field, obviously, with the his mentor. There's a lot of mentors in Game of Thrones these days. And uh, they're obviously walking. Uh, we find they're actually at the... You know, as further north as you can possibly...
possibly get. Except there's no snow, there's no wasteland, there's lush green area, and there's obviously those little lovely old tree people who seem to have a guy uh, you know, tied up to a rock. Um, and then they, um, as they approach, uh, the lead, uh, the lead tree girl person, uh, pulls out a, a shard. Now, at first glance, you think it's dragon's, uh, dragon glass or obsidian or, or whatever a million names it has. But then, um, she starts driving into the guy's chest, who's screaming and screaming, but then, then, ha 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 ha, points to his eyes that start turning blue, and then, Lo and behold, the first White Walker. So we find out that the tree people, in their uh, intelligent me uh, mentality, made the fucking White Walkers. Um, twats! But hey ho, I digress. Um, obviously, Bran uh, starts going, Oh, you made the White Walkers! Why? 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 And she answers simply, because of you. And to be fair, I saw that answer coming, to be honest. No, uh, obviously, uh, they must have been at war with the first men, the first men were going north and uh, obviously just conquering and destroying and blah 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 blah. So, they, they, they basically unleashed the Game of Thrones version of a nuclear weapon, I guess. Then we move on to the Iron Islands. Now, um, Yara and uh, Theon uh, obviously have gathered with all the other um, uh, Ironborn on the on the uh, obviously on the island, of course, and they're trying to work out uh, obviously who's going to be in charge next because there's no real sort of succession as, as a standard monarchy. It looks like they're elected or uh, your know, people join factions and whichever is the strongest obviously gets elected and yada yada yada. But uh, Yara's uh, going, oh yeah, I'm experienced, I'm this, I'm that, and obviously the men are going, ah, but um, uh, but the king's son is there. Uh, <laughs> little Reek himself, who seems to be becoming more and more Theon again, so we'll see. But he turns around and goes, no, she's been leading you through thick and thin, uh, she's vastly experienced, many of you have sailed under her, she's perfect leader, select her. And then um, out of the blue comes, uh, obviously, their lovely, 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 lovely uh, uncle called, uh, it was a year on, I think his name was? Yeah, okay, year on. So year on Greyjoy comes out, and um, yeah, he pretty much goes, um, yeah, I killed your daddy. Yep, yeah, it was me. I only apologise, I didn't do it sooner. So, um, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> that's pretty much um, uh, a statement I have to make. Oh, he was a prick, I killed him. <laughs> Sorry I didn't do it sooner, whoops and daisies. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have balls to do that, to be fair. <laughs> but uh, hey ho. So obviously they start contesting the throne. Um, the Ironborn obviously go um, with uh, Euron, and um, obviously he gets uh, anointed as king. I like how he he was crowned. He was stuck under the water until he basically drowned. Then they drag his body out, and then he had to spit out obviously all the water that had uh, been taken into his lungs. Almost like. He was becoming the embodiment of the drowned god, as it were. At this point, however, uh, Jarl and uh, Theon are obviously uh, scarpered. They know um, they haven't got the manpower or the uh, uh, or basically the resources to take him head on, so uh, they do the most logical thing. Uh, the Iron Islands, keyword islands, steal all the ships! Um, what uh, Euron also pointed out is he wanted to get all the Khaleesi, and, but basically to basically try and forge an alliance, he was planning on going to Khaleesi and simply saying, look, I've got the biggest fleet in the world, I'm a master salesman. Let's get married. I'll conquer the seas for you. I'll take you to Westeros with your armies and blah blah blah. That was his plan. However, y um, Yara and uh, Theon have, uh, like I said, stolen the best ships and basically the majority of the fleet. Uh, Euron has obviously commanded his men to build him a thousand ships and blah 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 blah. So it's kind of interesting how that's going to turn out. Is um, Yara going to go to Khaleesi herself and go, look, my uncle was planning to do X, Y, and Z. Ignore what he says, allow me to be your fleet master and I'll conquer the seas for you, and you support me, I'll support you, blah 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 blah. Who knows, she may even try to uh, kill Khaleesi just to piss her uncle off, we don't know. And it's funny enough, we go straight from uh, the Iron Islands to Khaleesi herself, who's looking over the uh, uh, Dothraki city. And uh, there's Jorah and Dario uh, as well, they're um, uh, on top of a cliff, um, just uh, obviously nattering. Uh, Khaleesi is basically showing she's so frustrated with uh, her Jorah that, um, you know, oh, I banished you twice and you came back to me twice. Uh, you saved my life, so I can't send you away, I can't keep you, and it's basically a case of what the fuck am I meant to do with you? Um, but uh, Joro, uh, being the uh, decent guy he is, he shows her his, um, how was it, grey skin skills, and, um, I can never recall, remember what it's called exactly, but he's not exactly in the best of shapes. And uh, Khaleesi's actually heartbroken at this point, uh, as you can actually see, she does want him in a, in a cir her circle, as uh, she said, you know, when I go to Westeros and conquer the Seven Kingdoms, I need you with me, it's no it's or buts. And Jorah, uh, sorry, Jorah, should I say, um, it only took him six seasons, I mean, that's not a long time to say that he loved her. <sighs> Guy, she's been screwing over a few other people before you, mate, you should have gone, you know, taking the initiative.
You know, it's Khaleesi for fuck's sake. You should have said straight away, but no, yeah. That's neither here nor there. Um, uh, Dario at this point's obviously been very quiet, not saying a thing, so you're just there for eye candy, I guess. Uh, so yeah, uh, Khaleesi basically turns around to uh, uh, Jorah and uh, says, um, Right, I give you a command, you gotta go and get yourself cured, you do not die, you uh, cure yourself and then you come back to me. That is my order to you, you will obey. So she really wants him alive, so uh, fair enough. So it looks like those bridges have been mended and... Uh, um, yeah, Jorah's, uh, you know, he's got a mission now, he's, he's finally got so, something to latch on to, rather than, you know, nothing. So, while we're on that subject, we move then on to Marine with uh, Tyrion, um, and he's talking to, obviously, the uh, the rest of the council that uh, Khaleesi left behind, Grey Worm, and obviously his uh, his love interest, and uh, Varys, uh, etc. So, uh, Tyrion's turn around and basically says, um, so, uh, yeah, um, how's the violence been since the pact? Uh, it's been about two weeks at this point, and uh, Grey Worm basically says, uh, uh, you know, the Masters haven't uh, done anything, They've uh, the Sons of the Harpy haven't attacked, and they seem to be holding up there in the bargain, and Tyrion goes, what about uh, the Free Men? Uh, <laughs> I like this bit, that uh, <laughs> Grey Worm goes, uh, on the day of the pact, it was the pact, you know, the day of the pact, two people died, but since then, no one, no, 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 no violence, it was just on the day of the pact, so he was very quick with that, but uh, I liked Varus obviously said it's an uneasy piece, but at least it's something. And you know, Tyrion's basically turning around and say, "Look, we've got something at the very least. You know, the uh, Sons of the Harpy have stopped their attacks for now. Um, you know, we we've achieved something. So you know, okay, it's not the ideal situation, but you know, it's working to their advantage. Simple as." But Tyrion does point out uh, that the Sons of the Harpy they've got a brilliant uh, crybaby story. Oh, destroy the foreign invaders, liberty, blah 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 blah. At least liberty for the free uh, for the masters, not for the slaves. So fuck the slaves. But there we are. Um, Tyrion then turns around and goes, "Khaleesi has a better story: Mother of Dragons, Breaker of Chains, and all that." As he says, freaking <laughs> brilliant. And um, uh, yeah, he uh, basically um, uh, says, uh, "Obviously, we need something for the people to get behind because you know they." Uh, they know Khaleesi released them from a cat, uh, from slavery, but they don't. The people don't know who's actually brought this security, who's brought this protection that they now are starting to enjoy. So uh, Tyrion finds someone of uh, rather inter uh, rather interesting. Um, he finds another red lady, like Melisandre. We don't know if it's exactly like Melisandre, or if she's like an acolyte of Melisandre. We don't know. Um, Varys shows his uh, discontent, of course, at this point. Um, points out that uh, oh yes, your red lady, uh, one of your priests successors are told uh, Stannis Baratheon that uh, he was the uh, uh, prince who was promised and uh, he was soundly defeated by this guy pointing to Tyrion standing next to him which I thought was freaking brilliant that's just Varys being Tyrion's bro there going yeah yeah your prophet was fucked up by this guy you know this little guy here yeah, fucked him right royally I love it right anyway um, uh, she says some things that obviously gets uh, uh, you know, sends a chill up Varys' spine, and you know, Tyrion's basically just going, look, we need to use a simple as, you know, uh, at least for the short term. In regards to Marine, I think uh, Tyrion's, um, again, just playing the pieces. Um, I still think he's going to destroy uh, the Sons of the Harpy and the Masters, and by the time uh, Khaleesi gets back, um, you know, she's, uh, you know, he'll have everything in place for her. Uh, obviously, uh, with that note as well, Khaleesi is uh, obviously heading back to, at least we think it's Marine, which, you know, where, where else is she going to go? She can't get to Westeros at the moment, at the head of death uh, of a Dothraki army. So, um, yeah, she looked badass when she was walking her, just riding at the front as well, in her uh, Dothraki clothes as well, which I thought was just a brilliant scene, but there we are. Okay, and so uh, we then move back to Bran. As we said, he uh, appeared a lot in this instance. Um, so he sees the guy, uh, the old man, sleeping, and then decides to uh, do his magic thing again. He goes back in time, and now he sees the exact same place where the White Walk was made, and uh, it's completely covered in snow. Um, he then sees the undead army in front of him. And starts uh, starts walking amongst them, and then he sees the four horsemen, the the the, the White Walkers, uh, obviously on their horses. And then he turns around, and there's the the uh, Knights King right behind him, and grabs him. Kind of like a Harry Potter moment with the uh, Voldemort. Uh, I can touch you, which kind of uh, leaves them in the shit because the protector spell that was protecting their place uh, kind of went collapsy at this point. So um, we then skip to um, uh, the wall where John is obviously uh, consulting his advisors. He basically 
basically says, look, we don't have the manpower to take Winterfell. You know, we we got we got the White Walkers to the north. They're coming. Um, but on the on the flip side, we can't fight the White Walkers with the Boltons at Winterfell and protect the south and blah blah blah. We've got to take Winterfell first, which I've been saying <laughs> for ages. So um, uh, yeah, so he's uh, trying to work out what manpower they have, and they just know that. Obviously, we just haven't got enough manpower, we can't do it. Uh, Sansa, at this point, uh, turns around and says, Oh, um, yes, our um, Uncle Brendan's taking the, the river run, and he's fighting against the Boltons. So, um, you know, uh, Jon Snow, he's got his uh, 2,000 wildlings there, thereabouts. Um, so he decides that obviously he's going to have to uh, obviously go to um, uh, the River Run and meet up with his uncle and try to form some sort of pack. As John says, there's a lot of other smaller houses that can match the Bolton army and their supporters. So, well, we'll see what happens there. Um, <laughs> and, um, I, 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 uh, it's a small scene, but it's just such a beautiful scene too. As John's heading out to the castle with obviously his Renew in tow. Oh, oh, what's his name? What's his name? Oh yeah, Tr Tromund, uh, uh, Tromund, the uh, uh, the giant man, I think his full name is. He's still looking at Brienne. Mouth down, jaw on the floor, just just eyeing her up, and uh, uh, Brienne of Tarth just going, What the fuck are you looking at me? Stop looking at me! Ugh, you're making her real uncomfortable, I love it. But uh, yeah, yeah, he he's in love, simple as. <laughs> he, 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 <laughs> that that Moylan's just in love, simple as. That's just brilliant. Right, okay, so then we come to the last bit now. Um... So the White Walkers actually march on the um, uh, on the uh, obviously on the tree at the north. Um, those tree p uh, girly things start throwing obviously magical uh, projectiles as well, trying to hold them off while uh, John, uh, sorry, while, um, while Bran is uh, obviously doing his thing. Uh, so uh, we find that the uh, White Walkers can actually walk through fire with no problem whatsoever. But the, um, the obviously the undead can't, so they have to scale uh, the top of the tree and obviously hack their way down. And, uh, yeah, so, um, uh, so like I say, Bran's uh, there. We have another scene of the Stark history. Uh, we have uh, Ned Stark uh, talking to his father, I believe. And uh, there's a... Uh, uh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold the door. Hold the door. Hold the door. Ah, oh, that was just a, a moment. I tell you what, Bran has got to invent the better lasting candle, the longer lasting candle or something, because he's cost a lot of people their lives. He's... Wow, he's got to be—he better be worth the blood that has been shed in his name, for, you know, to get him just to there, you know. So obviously, um, uh, the, um, the White Walkers uh, breach through. Um, one, another one of the White Walkers is dead, so that's two down. Um, the um, obviously the Night's King kills uh, Bran's mentor, and obviously Bran's left on his own. And uh, yeah, he walks into the younger hold uh, holder uh, and. Uh, obviously, the girl that keeps uh, screaming uh, to hold or hold the door, hold the door, which kind of fucks his mind up. Um, yeah, like I say, a lot of people die. Just this massive wave of uh, of undead just keep storming and storming. They just can't, you know, the the, the few people that are actually at that tree, they just can't hold them off. They killed another wolf. They killed another star wolf. I mean, fuck sakes, Game of Thrones. <laughs> We're running out of wolves. Stop killing the fucking wolves. Ah, oh, at least that wolf died, you know, in battle. I mean, you know, he. He went out swinging, but I like my wolves. Stop killing the fucking wolves. I mean, who's left? There's Ar Ar Arya's wolf, and then there's Ghost, and I think all the others uh, uh, are dead now. It's just not. It's just not nice. It's just. It's upsetting. But um, yeah, um, you know, the last scene uh, uh, there. Obviously, uh, the the uh, the tree lady, uh, you know, basically turns herself into uh, uh, into like a martyr. She holds uh, the last of that uh, bluey orby things that we're using as weapons. She gets pretty much ripped to shreds, but she blows herself up and uh, as many of the uh, undead as she can. Um, and uh, hold or um, as his name, as we finally found out what that meant, was hold the door. He held the door while being ripped apart himself. But he kept holding long enough for Bran and uh, that lovely little lass to uh, obviously escape. But um, it's been, oh, you know, Holden was such an innocent, and yet you know he had such a horrible fate, such a shit life, and you know he carried fucking Bran for bloody ages. You know, can, can you give him like a, a good send off or something? But no, I mean, yeah, you know, okay, it was a heroic death and it may add meaning, but come on, I could, I could have cut the guy some slack. Oh. But uh, yeah, to be fair, uh, in, in, in conclusion, that, that episode was pretty much more like a filler episode. There was very little that really, you know, in real excitement, you know, uh, it's more like a, uh, what this person's doing, what that person's doing, what this is doing, that's doing. I mean, Bran seemed to have any, uh, any of the real sort of action himself. 
Right, okay, so um, that's pretty much uh, it at the moment. Um, obviously, next episode we should have Dave back, our studio back, and all, all, uh, all the bits and bobs here. So, uh, like I said, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, please be gentle with this episode as I'm running on my own. And, uh, oh, hello. Oh, just got a message from Dave there. Ha ha ha, I'm on holiday while you're uh, at work. I'm in the blistering sun while you're in the pissing down rain. Just sent you a lovely video. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, then, let's have a look at that video then uh, that he sent us on a 20 second thing, so let's see what he has to say for himself. Richard, I can't be asked YouTube this week. Fuck off, you ugly, ugly shit goatee witch bastard. I'll see you soon. Love you too. Bye bye. <sighs> That was nice of him, wasn't it? In reply to what you just said there, Dave, uh, I'm sure you're already going to watch this while you're abroad. You are a complete and utter and total complete and utter 